So good, uh, good morning to everybody. My name is Fabrizio Ramoino and I work at Esdrin. And I work uh, mainly with uh, optical data, Sentinel-2, and even with Sentinel-3 for fire detection and fire monitoring. So in the next 20 minutes, I will present how, so which kind of preprocessing is needed uh, for the optical data before to go to the time series analysis that is presented, will be presented by Pierre. So optical sensors are passive sensors uh, where the energy source is the sun. They measure lights from blue till uh, zwier bands. And, point, okay. and so the sun is the source and here we have the atmosphere that represent uh, that affect mostly the, the measurement. So we need as pre-processing in order to process the image coming from top of atmosphere in order to correct from the atmospheric effect and even to uh, produce cloud-free surface reflectance product, products. We need to um, detect, detect the clouds and remove them. There are several uh, software and processors that try to do it, monotemporal or multi-temporal. I show you a couple of them. And we have to uh, correct atmospherically the images, but don't forget to reproject if you have uh, images coming from uh, uh, different sources, different satellites, uh, to resample the product because if you have uh, different products with different spatial resolution in order to get a nice time series and to uh, analyze the time series you need the same spatial resolution and after the co-registration because if we if there is a shift even of one pixel your time series will be wrong so the analysis of time series will be wrong So for the clouds, uh, a big portion of the Earth is covered by clouds each day. And uh, uh, we can, uh, three possible scenarios can, can happen. So cloud-free pixel, so pixel not covered by clouds, and you are lucky. Especially in the Sahel belt, it's quite difficult to have it. And partially cloudy, so it's pixel mixed between clouds and clouds, and totally cloudy. So to detect and to uh, screen out these clouds, there are different methods. Uh, there are spectral threshold methods, so based on a threshold on the spectral bands. There are uh, feature extraction and classification, learning algorithms, multi-temporal analysis, the one used in uh, uh, Maya, and the uh, multi-sensor approach. So the atmosphere, the atmosphere uh, is the worst uh, <laughs> effect to correct because there are several uh, atmospheric correction for Sentinel-2, for instance, there are several atmospheric correction processor, but uh, there are pros and cons. So the two main effect uh, of the atmosphere is the scattering that occurs when particles <coughs> or large gas molecules present in the atmosphere interact with and cause the electromagnetic radiation to be reflected from its original part and the, absor and the absorption. So, okay. So we have several, this is the range of the Sentinel-2. It's come from 0 0.4 micron till two, more or less, it's here. So there are a lot of atmospheric windows. And Sentinel-2 has three bands at 60 meters, band one for coastal aerosol, uh, band, uh, band nine for uh, water vapor correction, and uh, uh, band 10 for cirrus. So why we want to get surface reflectance? Because we have top of atmosphere uh, product and we want to uh, correct the atmospheric uh, effect in order to uh, compare different images uh, to have the real measurement of the pixel that can be uh, repeatable even with in-situ measurement. So at sensor reflectance, 
we have the surface reflectance plus the atmospheric reflectance. So in the atmosphere, we have the aerosol <coughs> that is a significant effect on visible uh, wavelengths and water vapor that affects the uh, sphere bands. So this is the relative contribution is aer aerosol optical thickness is 80%. And water vapor is about 15, and the altitude even counts. You have to take into account even the altitude. So for cloud detection and removal, I put five. So I put Centuco because is the, at the moment, is the official one. So the product delivered by ESA, the level 2A, so atmospherically corrected. Uh, in the PDGS, in the ground segment in DISA, they use sent to core. Um, but you can uh, uh, correct atmospherically the images, the Sentinel-2, even running sent to core or um, via common line or uh, using SNAP. It uh, has been developed uh, as plugin for SNAP. The unique difference between the two is the DEM used. Because in the PDGS, uh, is used the planet DEM at 30 meter resolution. And uh, uh, for SNAP and, the, and uh, via command line, the default one is the SRTM at 90 meters. After, we have Maya. It's developed by CSB and CNES. And this uh, joined the uh, MAX processor with AdCore coming from DLR. We have IDPIX developed by Brockman and Consult. It doesn't apply any atmospheric correction, but is, a, um, is identification of pixel. So for each pixel, it's assigned a determinated class. So cloud, uh, serious cloud, or clear pixel. After we have FMASK, developed by USGS, has been developed for Landsat images, but has been adapted for, uh, to work with Sentinel-2 image. And after there, are, there is this Sentinel Hubs cloud detector, is the first time that I, I listen this name, and, but should be uh, quite nice because it's a pixel-based and the combination of FMASK, sent to core Maya, and machine learning. So it should be very powerful. But I cannot provide you any feedback because I didn't use it yet. So we focus the attention on these two because sent to core is the official one at the moment. And Maya is used in uh, sent to agri. So sent to core is a single image processing algorithm, uh, taking as input level 1C. There is cloud screening and classification, atmospheric correction over land surface, using the ad core developed by DLR, and the uh, Libratran, uh, the lookup table coming from Libratran, is the uh, radiative transfer code. So here you have the differences between the sent to core used uh, uh, in SNAP and the one in the PDGS. The big change is this one. But if you have a high resolution DM, you can provide as input to send to core. Okay. So we have serious correction that is optional. There is a, a top of atmosphere uh, to bottom of atmosphere conversion. So using aerosol or optical thickness retrieval and water vapor retrieval. And the output uh, are 11 bands at 60 meters, 9 bands at 20, 4 bands at 10. And after you have the aerosol optical thickness map and the water vapor map and the classification layer at 20 meter and at 60 meters. So these are the class of the uh, scene classification layer. You have no data, saturated, uh, dark area pixel, this one is to answer to your question. This is cloud shadow um, detection mask. Cloud shadow and dark area, more or less is misleading one with the, with the other. So you can find cloud shadow within this dark area pixel. 
and after you have vegetation, no vegetated water, and classified and the clouds. So one improvement in the last version of CentCore was the possibility to add the ESA CCI data package, that is land cover at 300 meter map, the water bodies at 100 meter, and the snow occurrence at 500 meters. And uh, this will uh, uh, improve the cloud screening and classification. So this is the an overview of uh, uh, SNAP. And this is sent to core module, the plugin um, installed in SNAP. So you can change the, um, all the parameters. You can set up the parameters. And here you can decide to provide as input your DM. If you have a high resolution DM, you can provide here. And this is how to uh, run the send to core via command line. OK, this is Maya. Maya from CNES, CESBIO at CNES. Um, it was, uh, at the beginning, it was MAX, multi-sensor atmospheric correction and cloud screening. And now they join MAX with that core, and uh, they create Maya. So it's within Teia, Peps, Mundi, and uh, sent to Agri platform. So uh, the, the method used is the multi-tempora. So you, have, you need a reference image. And after, uh, you can create a stack of images. And uh, you, uh, thanks to the multi-tempora methods, you can detect easily the clouds. The problem is that, OK, it's uh, surface fractance uh, uh, change slowly with the time. It depends from the area of interest. Because maybe you can take a cloud-free image once per year, depend from the zone. And these are the main steps. So cloud and cloud shadow detection, uh, estimate water vapor and aerosol, atmospheric correction, and correction for thin cirrus clouds. Maya combines multi-temporal and multi-spectral uh, criteria. And the uh, cloud detection works is done at 240 meters. For sent to core, you have the output of the, the mask for the clouds is at 20 meters. Do not forget the other step, reprojection, resampling, and co-registration. Reprojection, as I said before, if you have different source with different uh, coordinate reference system, you have to reproject, to reproject the data in a common uh, reference system. The resampling, there are several methods to do resampling. We, uh, I chose three, the nearest neighbor, the bilinear interpolation, and cubic convolution. And after, there is the co-registration, because one pixel shift can affect drastically your result. So why use time series? Time series is a set of satellite images taken over the same area in different times, in different times. It, it makes use of uh, different uh, uh, sources and coming from different satellites as well. And this, the uh, objective is to understand how Earth is changing, determine how the cause of these changes, and predict the future. I will show some example. This one is a T Waters Kloof Dam in South Africa. This is a water change that occurs during one year, from January 2017 to January 2018. There was a big change within one year. And this comes from Sentinel-2 time series. And after some processing, uh, you can find this exercise I have done in uh, uh, last year, maybe. Yeah, in, uh, during the land clearing course uh, in Leicester. And this is the, the change is the, the white is coming from January 2017, and the red one is January 2018. This one is uh, a deforestation example coming from Landsat time series from 80s till 2018. So you can see how fast is deforestation. 
And after uh, there are some uh, ESA land cover maps. This is Globe Cover 2005, produced by Media France. Uh, this is Globe Cover 2009, um, produced by ESA uh, together with uh, UCL, with Pierre de Fourny. And we have the second phase that was uh, Epoch from 2000, uh, the first first phase of CCI land cover project uh, together with UCL we generated three epoch maps from 2000 to 2010 and after in the second phase we generated the uh, CCI land cover yearly maps from 92 till 2015 all these maps are freely available you can download and it's enough that you put the copyrights. And uh, this is the high resolution land cover product over Africa produced by uh, UCL uh, in the CCI land cover project, a 20 meter resolution with 10 uh, classes. And it's freely available to, for the download. And this one is over uh, uh, Mexico and Central America at 10 meter resolution. Uh, coming from Sentinel 2A and 2B. Okay, now I leave the stage to Pierre. If you have any question, we can uh, postpone at the end of the presentation. Okay. Do you have any question? Um, why was Centucor chosen to be the official algorithm? Be <laughs> because was the first one. <laughs> I, I think I think so. No, no. There, were, there, are, there is a study from ESA called uh, uh, ASIC. Uh, ASIC, yeah. Yeah, but th there is another project running. I guess more or less more than fifteen atmospheric correction processor just to quantify and to uh, assess the, the, the quality of the, of the outputs. But the, the study is, uh, is ongoing. So this one is, I, I think, so I said it's official. It's official because the level 2A product generated by ESA used this kind of processor. This is the, the, the reason why. But Pierre maybe can explain better later on. Just elaborate a little bit more on that uh, topic. Like, but then it, it gets to the end that Centuagri, which is an official product from ESA, is using Masha. And the official atmospheric correction model from ESA is Central Core. So uh, are you guys planning to standardize this? Yeah, this, this, this. <laughs> <laughs> these are tricky, tricky questions, but yeah. <coughs> No, Sent to Agri use Maya for some reason. I will explain that later. Uh, Sent for CAP, which is developed on the top of Sent to Agri, will be compatible with Sent to Core. And Sent for STAT will be maintaining Maya and Sent to Core. Therefore, the user will be able to choose. Yeah, because for each of the processors, there are pros and cons. Yeah, so. yeah we understand that. <coughs> Uh, one more question. Uh, for in terms of atmospheric correction, uh, we noticed for some scenes um, kind of overcorrection and resulting in very high and DVI values. Is this going to be um, tackled in some way in the future? I, I think that uh, there is a quality check in the ground segment, and time to time there is a report. Uh, I think monthly. There is a report coming, uh, coming from uh, uh, ground segment. And in this report, there are even some uh, uh, error reported there. So maybe you can check, otherwise you can write on the step forum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that this it was born for uh, a snap, but you can ask even this kind of question. 
there are people from um, ground segment that can answer to your question. Thank you. Thank you, very useful presentation. Uh, so are you planning any solution for these two or one pixel misregistration yeah, of, the, uh, uh, between different dates of the same time? Yeah, yeah. There is one pixel more or less between even Sentinel-2 and Sentinel-2B. Sentinel it's ongoing the uh, generation of global reference image that this will solve the issues. I think that it's at 80 percentage of the, um, I think, end of the year. They told me the last uh, meeting that we have done with the ground segment, they told me it's planned to release end of the year oh, because nice. it's almost done, mm -hmm. but uh, not yet, not Thank completely. You. Uh, this afternoon, there will be the uh, practical on uh, optical data on Sentinel-2. Thank you. Thank you for your question, because this is key. And this is why we want to spend a little bit of time, thanks to Fabrizio and what I explained and what we will do this afternoon, is the fact that we believe from our experience and from your question, we understand that we share the, mem the same concern. One of the key bottleneck of Sentinel-2 exploitation is the quality of surface reflectance due to the quality or the performance of the atmospheric correction, the cloud screening, the shadow screening, and so on. And therefore, I will just emphasize a little bit more what Fabricio has mentioned. He just explained that Sentucor or Usually, any processing uh, for the atmospheric correction and the cloud and sh cloud shadow detection will provide that kind of result. And as Fabrizio explained, UCL, like five different labs, has been involved in the benchmarking of this uh, algorithm. Before ESA select the send to core, actually, they, they ask users like us to challenge those who are producing the correction. And this was the result of this study. It was not exactly Maya, it was a combination of uh, uh, Max and Adcore. It was not named Maya at that time, but it was very similar to Maya. And we highlight two points. First, there is not a good solution. This is the first concern. There is not a very good solution. There is for sure not the perfect solution. And we have to check to quality control the time series that we are using in our application. Otherwise, we are misleading. And typically, a big challenge is the shadow of the topo topographic feature. And you see the, the topographic feature makes shadows. And the shadows of the mountain and the shadows of the cloud are very similar. And of course, if you mask all the time the shadow of the mountain, because the satellite pass always at the same time, then you believe that there is always a cloud, but actually there is a, just a slope. Therefore, this is a big challenge. What Fabrizio mentioned now is there have been, from the atmospheric community, a big benchmarking study called A6, where any player jump into the game to assess the quality of the surface reflectance retrieval, meaning mainly aerosol correction, water vapor correction and, uh, uh, and ozone correction. And this led to some results which are available, but they did not con consider to look at the cloud screening. And right now, this is what Fabrizio mentioned. There is organized by NASA, some part of ESA and European colleagues, another benchmarking also involving the cloud screening and the closed shadow screening. But we, the results are not known yet. And we have to say that this is not because an algorithm is beating the others, that this one is suitable for operational processing, because some are very heavy. Therefore, I just mentioned the topo uh, shadow. And some shadows are very easy, but look at the shadows of the cloud. This is a nightmare from a LAN remote sensing perspective. All these shadows on the LAN appear like darker parcels, 
and actually they are not. The other challenge is the cirrus and the hairs. Uh, you see that some, some Marigodum detect much far too much hairs or cirrus. One of the drawbacks of the Maya, which has been solved by the very last version, uh, uh, version which was delivered this summer, it was too conservative about the hairs, and therefore it masked, it masked too much hairs pixel, hazy pixel, which were not actually hairs. Now they have solved this from Maya perspective. The other point is the bright surface. I mean, in many pre-processing systems, the very bright surface appears always as a cloud. And therefore, you believe there is a permanent cloud. You don't get a hole in your time series. And actually, this is a bright roof or a bright surface. Therefore, as we have to lift, the atmospheric physicists have not done their, their job yet. Therefore, we have to live with no perfect algorithm. And the only way to survive is to check the quality of the level 2A, the surface reflectance time series. And this is what we will do together this afternoon. After the pre-processing uh, introduced on SNAP, we will look at the, some procedure for quality control of the time series. This can be done by visual check or by pseudo-invariant <coughs> target. Why did we use Maya in sen 2 agri while ISA chose sen 2 core First, we have to decide before ISA. This was not coordinate choice because our contract forced us to select before. Second, ISA did not want to use Maya or Max because this is a multi-temporal processing, and therefore this is heavier. It's much more computing uh, intensive because you have always to process three months before. If you want a single image, you have to process three months because you want to get the land surface reflectance first, and then you detect the cloud. Therefore, it's not so convenient if you have to, for your PhD, process a single image, then to core will do the job. If you want an operational large-scale large processing, then the competition is very open. Another advantage of Maya, but I am not selling Maya, is the <laughs> but we have chose Maya. We did the, the, the job for ISA to compare Sentuko and Maya. We could not find, uh, I mean, which one was the best. Actually, we need both. Uh, and this is why maybe the last version where they combine everything, I'm afraid there will be many flags and the user will have to decide at the end. But another reason for Maya was the fact that Maya processed Landsat 8 and Sentinel-2 exactly the same way. And therefore, as you can see here, you have a surface reflectance from Sentinel-2, and you process the Landsat 8 exactly the same way, and you can fuse them, you don't see the difference. Of course, some pixels have 330 meter resolution, the other have 10 meter, but you fill the gap very nicely from a surface reflectance perspective. And therefore, this was the reason. I don't know if I we, uh, will go through this. I mean, and this is why land people uh, need the atmospheric uh, physicist. Uh, I mean, because we look at cloud mainly, eh? and this is every first day of the month, and you have always a cloud. While you, what you want is this. And therefore, how can you do that? This was done with proba and spot vegetation, with daily observation. And some place in the world, you need set year, seven years of daily observation to get a, a cloud-free pixel in some places. <coughs> and therefore, the only way to do it is to apply what we call a compositing algorithm. You are probably much aware about this. But this is typical for global uh, time series. It's less typical for high resolution. In Landsat, we were not used to do that kind of compositing. When you have seven daily observations for a week, you can actually combine all of them, take an algorithm, maybe the best pixel, and then you build your weekly composite or weekly synthesis, which is the best pixel of the week put together. Of course, you can do that at annual scale, and then you have 365 images, and you take the best pixel available out of this. When I say you take the best pixel, this was not a so good idea. Actually, it was done like this before with NOAA, FHR, with spot vegetation, and so on. And this was using the maximum NDVI value 
to define which one was the best pixel. But we know that the maximum NDVI value introduced some bias and actually is not helpful very much when you want to produce surface reflectance composite. It was very valid when we, we want to produce NDVI value composite. But as soon as you move to the surface reflectance composite, maximum NDVI value are not a good indicator of the quality of the surface reflectance. Some other algorithms use the best available pixel based on flag. This is possible. What we have proposed more than 10 years ago was to just average the valid cloud-free surface reflectance measurement. This is the mean compositing. And this has been adopted in, in various cases. Of course, you have to have a good flag for the quality of your uh, pixels, but then you can average that. If you want more information, you can look at this publication. There is a set of publications related to benchmarking compositing algorithm. And for the, for the surface reflectance of Sentinel-2, actually, we have been using an improved version of uh, the mean compositing. The mean compositing is just the quality control of the, all the pixels. You take the, all the valid pixels and you do the average. Actually, in the Sen2 Agri system, this is a bit more sophisticated. This is a weighted average synthesis processor. You weight it accord according to the central date, meaning that if you, want, if you want the color composite, I mean the surface reflectance composite, for mid of May. Of course, you want to have the mid of May observation to contribute more than the one from the 1st of May and the one from the 30th of the May. And therefore, there is a weight according to the distance to the reference date. There is another weight related to the aerosol optical thickness, another one related to the distance to cloud, because when, once you are very close to a cloud, even if you are not flagged to the, as a cloud, this pixel is suspicious anyway. And then there is a weight between sensor in this case. Therefore, this is the one which has been used today by Centu Agri, but also by TEA, the collaborative segment, and, and some other uh, uh, processing. Just to show you, I mean, this is, a, this is a profile. And in gray, the background in gray is actually the number, the proportion of cloud-free days for a week. And therefore, here you are sure that you will get every week at least a cloud-free image for uh, uh, these pixels, this one in Maradi. We have colleagues from Maradi, isn't it? Did they arrive? They did not arrive from Maradi University? Ah, you are there. OK, this is why I took your place. And there in Maradi, you are lucky. You will get, if you have a daily revisit, for sure, based on 12 years of images, you, you will have a cloud-free pixel every, every week. The, sorry. If, if, you have, if you are in this area, we are in Brazil, then the, proper, the, the chance to have a, a cloud-free pixel on this week is only one out of two years. I mean, 50% of chance. And therefore, you understand that your, your way of compositing and the way you want to con cloud screen your, your, your images will depend to the area. And therefore, this is why ISA is actually struggling to select the best send to core solution, I mean, the best algorithm solution for cloud screening, is the fact that, from our experience, it varies according to the place. Recently, we worked with Sentucor in Central Africa. I mean, it was very, very difficult because, as you mentioned, I mean, the aerosol optical uh, thickness correction was very much scene dependent. And therefore, you cannot process two scenes at the same time. You look at one scene, you look at the next scene coming from the same image, it's completely different. And this is due to the fact that the aerosol optical uh, thickness retrieval is sense specific. This is part of the sense to core choice. It speeds up the process, but then you have some drawback. Uh, this is again, okay, this is the sense to agree, uh, and this, this has been shown already by Espen. I will not show. You see, this was 2016, with this was max, and you see the stripe. 
And the stripe means actually that the aerosol correction probably was not very good. And actually, this has been improved, but it's still, still sometimes there. Uh, depending, of course, of the season, it will be uh, uh, more uh, pronounced or not. When you look, this was the very first color composite at national scale. And you can look at the number of images available here and the quality of the image here. They are very much related, of course. Locally, it looks very good. It looks very nice. But as soon as you go for large scale, then you see all these orbit effects. Fortunately, the result, at least in sense to agree, is not depending to that. The cloud compositing, I mean, sorry, the, the, yeah, the cloud-free compositing, or the synthesis, are just made for visualization. In our case, we never process this synthesis in the processing chain. In the processing chain, we put the full-time series. Of course, when you want to look at an image, you don't want to look at 300 images, then you have a color composite. Okay? Therefore, the, the synthesis are made for visualization purpose first. Okay, this is a very nice one, uh, just to see that sometimes it works very nicely. And this is June, this is Cape Town, South Africa, and there is no artifact at all. And this is impressive. And this shows that it works very nicely. And probably Santuco would have worked very nicely also in this place, because this is an easy place. And therefore, before doing anything from the time series of Sentinel-2, please quality check uh, your time series. I mean, it's not being the fact that we don't trust what is coming from the side up. It's we trust this, but we want to know the noise, the noise in the time series. Now, just to be quick on how, when, once you have your time series, which is quality control, we would like then to get information, and we call this temporal matrix, to capture the dynamic, the temporal dynamic. And a way to compute this temporal dynamic is a very well known. You can take the maximum NDVI, and if you take the maximum NDVI, this will correspond to the maximum green biomass. You can take the minimum biomass. It will be probably at the harvest period. Of course, these are features or metrics that you can compute from a single pixel profile. And you have all these images, and you look for the maximum, and this is the image. You can also take the slope, the maximum slope, or the, minimum, or the maximum negative slope, and this will tell you about the, the fast-growing period and the senescence period. And these are very interesting uh, time for the, for the crop monitoring. We can also use the maximum rate, which is a different kind of metric, which allows to detect when the soil was bare. Maximum rate reflectance means bare soil. And actually, this is the sowing preparation, which is a very nice moment to know. And therefore, this is the general concept of the temporal matrix to capture the time series information. Now, again, in this afternoon, we will compute this. And because we know that there is some noise in, in the time series, we will not take the maximum value. We will take three of them and average them. Otherwise, you are, I mean, the, the chance to take a noisy pixel it will be very high. Taking the average will reduce this noise. Another way to do it, and this will not be done today at the... Better. This will not be done this afternoon, but this is running in Sent to Agri, is to take your time series and then to fill the gap. And then to resample, to, to fill the gap, then to smooth out, and then to resample on regular time. In this case, this is every 10 days, you resample your smooth profile, and you create a new time series based on the images, but with different value, because these are coming from the sm smooth profile. And then you can compute the temporal matrix from that, and you get this kind of images, 
the maximum rate will be, okay, those, if you want to discriminate between meadows, uh, grassland, or uh, cropland, arable land, then maximum rate uh, temporal matrix will be very, very good because the grassland will, main, will always be green and never with a high, high value in, in the maximum rate, maximum slope and maximum NDVI and so on. Just to, to give you the most detail, we don't take the date of the maximum value. Uh, we don't take the, sorry, we don't take the maximum uh, red value. We take the date of the maximum red value to take the surface reflectance in all band. We don't take the NDVI maximum value. We take the date of the NDVI maximum value, and there we take the surface reflectance in all band. Therefore, there is a, something a bit uh, more sophisticated than regular temporal matrix. With that, I will stop. I have some logistics for you before we let you go for lunch. But maybe if you have one or few questions, I can try to reply. OK. If the only question is, where can I have lunch? <laughs> this is in your info package. But before you get lunch, you need some information. This are, every morning, it will be in this room at 8.30, not at 9, but 8.30 in this room. There will be the teaching till 12.30. In the afternoon, this is a different place. This is 100 meters far away, but this is not here. As Magdalena explained, there is two rooms, what we call the Ulysse and Ceres, and you are invited to stick in these rooms because everything will be the same in both rooms. And we would like to split the group in two. And uh, our best split would be, I have tried to count. <laughs> this side should go to the Cero Ceres computing room. Uh, sorry, the Ulis. The, uh, sorry. The Ulis is a small one. Eh? The Ulis from Brent. Can you raise your hand? OK. Everybody at the right of Brent have to go to the Ulis, OK? And the others to the Ceres. There may be, uh, in your case, you will be the adjuster, adjusted <laughs> variable. You will see where uh, there, there should be some two seat extra. Otherwise, uh, we will fill both rooms. Then uh, if, of course, there is too many people in one room, uh, they will be moved to the other one. They are next to each other. If some of you have your best friend or your best colleague that you have to work <laughs> sitting on the other side, you can bargain by, with any people there. <laughs> or maybe come in advance, uh, a little bit in advance, just to show you where, where it is this. Our, this rector show you, we are here. We took the picture here, eh, on the stair. We are here, and actually, we have to go through this. This is this, this direction. And therefore, this is, you have to be covered, because in, way, in Belgium it rains. And then there is an entrance, which is here. Therefore, you have to go this way. We, there is even a flag. <laughs> the, same, the same flag from here, there is another one there. You can't miss it. But don't get into the building. Get just behind, and you get into the building behind the main entrance. Uh, sorry. Then we will have, if we work well together, we are invited by Bellsport to go to the icebreaker. And the icebreaker will be at the museum. The museum is here. Therefore, probably you came this way. You came this way, and there is no way there. The, <laughs> the city is not complete yet. We wait for a bridge there. You have to go this way or the other way, but it's very long. What you have to look for, this is a famous place. This is Place des Sciences, uh, Square of Sciences. This is a woody area. 
and the entrance of the museum is on the side, on this side. Okay? Actually, the building, you can't miss it. The building is this. Okay? But the entrance is over there. Don't go there, it's a shop. <laughs> the entrance is there, okay? Okay, then Magdalena, I've been through this. I don't think we have to go. Then for lunch. For the poster, first for the poster maybe. For the poster, three of you, you know that, you, thank you, Sophie. We did not introduce Sophie. If you are all there, it's basically thanks to Magdalena, Irene, and Sophie. Eh? And so Sophie will be teaching as well. Uh, but you remind me that there is a poster session tomorrow. To have the poster session, you need to display your poster at the lunchtime. To have the display of your poster at the lunchtime, you need to bring your poster in the morning. <laughs> but three of you did not print their poster. Therefore, we will print them. But it will cost between 25 and 30 euros. And we can print them if you give a, a file now to Jean. Jean is the guy there. Therefore, if you want your poster to be printed, before you go for lunch, please provide him the, 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 the file now, right now. Because he has to go to the print shop to print it and then to give it you back. OK? Now for the lunch, this is the challenging part. <laughs> because you have seen this town is very special. Eh? Maybe I should show you that. I mean, this was 300 years ago. This is today. This is where we are. And this is the way it is organized. Leonardo da Vinci had an idea. You know this guy from Italy. He had an idea to build a, a town where the vassals will come and all the servants will be below. And the nice city, clean street, and so on will be at the top. We did that except the, the last one. <laughs> it's not so clean. Because actually, we have no vessel here, but we have cars. And therefore, you have the cars running below. And there needs two or one or three parking level. And then there is a pedestrian area. And this is where the city is not complete. You have this. Now it's getting almost complete. You have this kind of. Therefore, you don't see where you are working on the parking or where we are working on the ground. Basically, it uh, doesn't matter for you as long as you don't get lost. And if you can buy a car, there is no GPS here below. Eh? <laughs> and your parking lot, uh, you can search for very long because the whole city is parking lot. Of course, this is a watershed which has been closed. In, our, in this area, we are on the ground, on the ground floor. But as soon as you go to the museum, there are, there are parking lot be, below you. And please stay at the surface. And at that level, there will be many students, because this is the first day of the academic year. They are pleased to meet each other. And uh, please find your way in the lunch, uh, lunch places. There are plenty, plenty all over. You are right here. Actually, now you have probably for lunch to follow the water drop. And this is a watershed. And the watershed, actually, drive you down to this place, or this place, or this place. And all these are, uh, there are restaurants, snacks, brasserie, whatever you want. And you can buy sandwiches or good restaurant. There is a lake there. This is a water storm uh, storage place. Because as we, I mean, this is an impervious area now. Before it was a, a farmland. Therefore, this is now an area we will see later on. There is no longer water now for the time being, but this is a special case. Therefore, as soon as you go down, you are in the right direction. You go down, down, down the, the slope and make sure that you find your way back. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. We heard that some went to Leuven. We understand that. That, of okay, course, Leuven, 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 the old one, is mis misleading. It can be the same here. The station is here. And if you follow ISA training sign, 
you should be up here. OK? But I hope you as long as you stay on the surface, your, your, your mobile will help you. Have a good lunch, and see you at the place I show. Eh?